Hi, this is Michelle from Uniquely Michelle, and today I'm going to do a video tutorial showing you how to make this side of the Christine ID wallet. Um, there's already a video out there, a uh, video tutorial for showing uh, how to make this side, the uh, flap side of the Christine ID wallet, but today we're going to work on this side. This is the, um, this has the, the ID window. This ID window is the alternate version. I'm going to show you up close what that looks like. So that's the an alternate way of making the um, ID window so it's different than what's in the pattern um, but I'll be showing you how to do this today there is the ID window in the um, pattern looks like this when it's finished okay so but that's not the one we're gonna do today I'll, I will do another video for that so this is what we're gonna work on today um, I'm excited to get started so let's get going Okay, I have all the pieces I need um, ready to go here for making the alternate ID window for the Christine ID wallet. So this is going to be the this whole side of the Christine ID wallet that has the ID window. Um, this alternate method, um, this was not my idea. I wish it was, but it wasn't. Mary Waters DeVita came up with this excellent um, idea for making the um, ID window in a in a different way. Um, some people love the way that it's um, done in the pattern, but not everyone does. And so this is an alternate method that works really well. So um, you will not find the instructions for this in the pattern, but you will find the instructions for this if you want written instructions with pictures. Um, I wrote a blog post in conjunction with uh, Mary Waters DeVita and um, it's I'm going to add a link uh, right now and so you can link to that video if or that I'm sorry that tutorial um, blog post if you would like um, and see how this is done see it all written out and everything else um, or you can keep watching this video and see how it's done that in that way um, the first thing I want to make sure that you understand is these pieces even though in the pattern there is a backside and there is a clear vinyl ID window. Um, these are different sizes than what is written in the pattern. So I'm going to tell you what these sizes are, what the cut sizes are for these pieces. Now this is the really it's officially the backside. When I wrote this pattern, it decided the ID was on the backside. Some people think of it as on the front side, but I it's at the backside. So anyway, but this. Um, this piece right here is cut at six and a half inches across by four inches up and down. Then the clear vinyl piece is cut at um, four inches across by two and a half inches up and down. I know you can't see it. There we go. So that's uh, four inches across, two and a half inches upside down. This piece is, an, is um, not even anything at all like what is used in the um, original ID window pocket. This is going to be a piece of binding that goes on the top and bottom of the um, ID window and this piece is 8 inches by 2 inches. Um, just to be clear on this, it's a binding piece but it's not like a quilt binding. It doesn't have to be cut on the bias. It I just cut it across the fabric and that works just perfect. So anyway, these are all the pieces. Oh, the other, the other thing we need to know is this piece of fusible fleece, um, the size on this is six inches by three and a half inches. Okay, and I've already fused it on there, so I almost forgot about it, but anyway, but that's on there. So here's all my pieces ready to go. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and um, move on to the first step. Okay, so I have the back piece right here, and I need to actually first cut it um, so that I end up with three pieces. And so what I need is I need to cut off two pieces that are one and a quarter inches wide. Um, I could just cut one and a quarter here, one and a quarter here, and that would work. But I actually don't want to do this with this fabric. So if you have a fabric that doesn't, the pattern doesn't really make any difference, um, you could just cut it that way. Because of how they're going to end up being laid out, the one and a quarter inch pieces are going to be on either side of a piece that ends up being four inches by four inches in the middle. So I want to keep this pattern in this way. So I'm going to cut um, the one and a quarter pieces 
from each side. So here's one and a quarter inches on this side, like this, and then I'm just going to set this aside for a second, flip this over, actually get this out of the way, I don't want to cut it again, and I'm going to do one, I cut, go ahead and cut one and a quarter inches on this side, just like that. All right, so now I can kind of puzzle piece it all back together, <laughs> but it is cut. So this center piece is four inches by four inches, um, and then these are one and a quarter inches wide by, of course, four inches up and down. So um, that I have all set and ready to go. So that's all I need to do with that. We will go ahead and move on to um, making our binding. So I'm going to grab my binding and head over to the iron. Okay, so I have my binding piece that's eight inches by two inches and I'm at my ironing board and so um, I'm going to be pressing this just as you would as a lot of the straps that you make um, or anything like that, especially the straps for Christine ID wallet. And so what I'm going to do first is bring the long edges together, um, wrong sides together, and go ahead and press that. So there we are, just like that. The ironing board's a little wiggly, I'm trying not to wiggle it too much. <laughs> so then I'm going to open that up and take these long edges, each one, and I'll start with one here first. Go ahead and press that toward the center fold, just like this. All right, flip this around, do the same thing here. Pressing that long edge toward that center fold, once again, wrong sides together. Alright, and then last step for this, for the pressing of this at least, I just go ahead and bring it, all the folds, get them all back in place again, and press all the way across just to get those, I'm using a little bit more steam now to get it nice and crisp. flip it over and give it a good press on this side as well all right and then so the next thing I'm going to do is I need to take this over to my where's my iron <laughs> take it over to the cutting board and I'll be cutting it in half so um, or cutting table I guess so anyway I'll go ahead and get this cut and um, we'll go from there okay I have cut my eight inch long binding piece in half, so I have two four inch pieces, um, obviously in half lengthwise. So, and I've already clipped um, one binding piece onto the edge, the, one of the long edges of my clear vinyl uh, rectangle. So I need to top stitch this in place, and I'm gonna top stitch both um, binding pieces in place in the same way. So um, I'm gonna just do that really quick. I have this nice little edge foot that I use for this and it works out really well. So, and by the way, clips work out really well because of the clear vinyl. Um, always a good thing to use clips. So I want to make sure that I have my, my binding edges, this folded edge here and on this side. Um, I want to have them as even as possible so that as I'm sewing across here, I'm catching both those pieces. Um, so just kind of something to be aware of as you're sewing across. Make sure that you're catching both edges, both folded edges in your seam. Well, not your seam, but your top stitch. <laughs> So anyway, go ahead and trim that. And then first thing I'm gonna do, quality check, make sure, yes, I caught it all on the other side as well. So 
got one part of it done. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other part. Just clip this on uh, here like this. And so I'll clip it on and I'll sew it on. Um, and then we'll have one other little sewing thing with this that we need to do. Okay, I have my both my binding pieces sewn in place. Um, this next little sewing step is so easy to forget, but really important to just have a really pretty finished um, ID window. Um, so I'm going to, what I need to do is just top stitch along the top edge, which with these polka dots, I, it doesn't make any difference which is the top edge, but I've decided that's the top edge. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a 1 8 inch top uh, stitch across there. So really quick and easy. I don't have to clip or pin or anything. Just go ahead and sew on across. An eighth inch seam allowance. And okay. Get this every once in a while. Okay, there we go. My bomb and stitch was a pain. But anyway. I got it done. There we go. So I have the nice um, top stitch there. Top stitches that are holding, top stitch parts that are holding on the uh, binding to the window. And now it's time for our final assembly. Okay, I have my ID window all ready to be installed. Um, I want to make sure that this is where I have that top stitch along the top edge so that's my top edge so I want to make sure that if I have a you know fabrics that are um, directional that I'm making sure that that's up on the fabric so um, all I need to do now is I I don't actually have to worry about these two side pieces so I'm going to move them off to the side and I just need to center this up and down I'm going to kind of eyeball it here um, obviously you can be very picky and center you know measure to center um, I also want to have this owl face kind of poking through here. It's kind of cute. And then I'm just going to clip this in place like this. And you'll notice I'm clipping I have clips close to the top here. And then these bottom clips I have up a little bit, not right on the binding. The next thing I'm going to do is take this over to my sewing machine. And I'm going to do a top stitch, eighth of an inch. Um, away from this uh, lower edge and I'm going through not only the binding and of course the vinyl but also this back piece so that's gonna then it'll be secure um, at that point so um, these clips are just holding it in place until I get that bottom um, edge secured and in place okay back again I had this over at um, my sewing machine getting that bottom piece um, all in place so you can see it's now being held there that's the only spot it's being held at the moment though so um, the next part to this is I'm going to bring these side pieces back into the picture here and I need to clip these in place um, right sides together on both sides and do a quarter inch seam down the edges each of those edges. So I'm going to go ahead and clip this in place um, and this will be holding, making sure that I'm holding the, um, the the upper part of the ID window in place as well. So you'll see I kind of want to make sure I hit that binding there that, um, across the upper part of the window. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side and then I'll take it over to my machine. We'll do a quick top stitch and we're almost done with the ID window side of this Christine ID wallet. All right, I have the sides clipped in place. Um, and so I just need to uh, first do a construction stitch to get these quarter inch stitch to get both of these in place. So I have my machine all set up to do that. Um, so I'll do that really quick like here. Um, This, these stitches are, of course, not only going to hold the sides in place, but they'll also hold the ID window in place as well. So, 
I want to make sure all those layers are getting in there in that seam and then we'll do the other side here same thing One more step. We'll finish it off beautifully. Alright, so I've got my seams done. And so the next step is to go over to the iron and open these up. So I'm going to do that really quick. You really want to be careful not to touch this clear vinyl with your iron at all. So, which is a little tricky through here. Um, but um, really just do the best you can. You can also, the, what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'll probably from this side um, iron the top side, the bottom, the upper part and lower part, flip it over and finish it up on this side. And um, this seam allowance should go um, toward the outer edges, both of them. And then you don't have to worry about the... Um, vinyl. It should be fine. Um, I still want to spend a lot of time over the vinyl area with your iron, but um, it should work out just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and get these pieces pressed back um, and um, then we'll do the last stitch with, or last step, which is just some top stitching. Okay, I have this um, at these edges pressed back. And now I just need to do a top stitch. Um, of course, you want to do it on this side, not on the ID window side. You don't want to stitch through the vinyl at this point. You just want to stitch here. That will also help keep this um, seam, the seam allowance, back because you'll be stitching right here next to the to the seam. So anyway, I'm just going to top stitch those uh, really quick, and then we'll be all finished up with this. I love top stitching. It just I think it makes a bag um, or a wallet or whatever look so professional. Um, it's worth, you know, sometimes doing those extra top stitches that in a sense they're not really doing anything. Um, just like the top stitch, you know, on the top of this um, pocket. It's unnecessary, but it just finishes it off really nicely. And these top stitches that I, you know, this one that I just did, the next one I'm about to do, they're not necessary. It's uh, It does actually add, the ones I'm doing now add a little reinforcement, which is not a bad thing, especially since, um, you know, this ID pocket um, could potentially have an ID coming in and out of it um, fairly often, and that you know, that puts some stress on it, on the fabric and everything. And so, but this, so this stitch does serve a little bit of a purpose, but a lot of the purpose of this stitch is just to have a nice, um, a nice finish to the wallet. So now we have this side of the Christine ID wallet all finished. Um, you have a great ID window pocket here. Um, and so, we're ready to to make more of the wallet. Um, if you haven't seen it already, I already have a video on how to make the um, flap side of the window or the Christine ID wallet. So I'll bring that over here really quick. This is the flap side, um, and this has back up my camera a little bit. Excuse the wiggles. This has the pockets for. Um, card slot pockets for credit cards or whatever. It also has the little, um, this is where the key ring goes. Um, and anyway, we have a nice snap on there. And then here's the ID side. So we, so this wallet is, the majority of the construction is done on this wallet. It's just the finishing touches 
um, and the wristlet and lanyard if you were making those. So anyway, um, I will make more videos um, to finish this up. Um, so I hope you join me for those. Please comment if you have any questions or comments. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to um, answer them. And just watch for more videos. Um, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and um, then you can know when I post new videos. So um, anyway, thanks for joining me.